Once we have inserted a raster image, we can take a look at how to control the way the image behaves within our map. First, it's important to know how to select a raster image. There are two methods to selecting an image. If I move my cursor over the border of this image, you'll see that it highlights that border. I can just click the image border, and it is then selected. When I select it, you'll see that we get a new context ribbon that has all of the commands that we need to make changes to the behavior of this image. It's important to remember that we aren't going to edit the image itself, but rather we'll only be changing its behavior within our drawing. Another way to select an image is to use a shift click command anywhere within the image. I'll press escape to deselect the image, and next I'll hold down the shift key and click anywhere within the image. You can see that once again this image is selected and the image contextual tab is displayed. This can be particularly useful when zoomed in on an image and the border is not visible, or if the border is otherwise obstructed. The first command that we'll look at to manipulate the image is draw order. Currently, our image is on top of all of the geometry, and instead we want it to display that image behind the geometry. With the image selected, I'll right-click and click Draw Order, and then Send to Back. As I zoom in, you can see that the image is now behind the geometry. I'll select the image again, and the next command we'll look at is how to clip this image. On the Image tab of the ribbon, Clipping Panel, I'll click Create Clipping Boundary. At the command line, I have several options. I'm going to use a rectangular clip, so I'll press Enter to select that default clip, and select the rectangle within the image. Notice that the image now displays only inside the rectangle that I specified. Again, we are not editing the image, we're only affecting how it is displayed within this drawing. If I select the image, I can now grab one of the grips and drag the clipping boundary and change its shape. I'm not stretching and scaling the image, I'm only affecting the clip boundary. Notice that there is also a blue arrow grip. This blue arrow enables us to invert the clip boundary. As I click it, You'll see that the clip is now inverted, and we now have what appears to be a hole in the image. This can be useful if it is desirable to not display a background image in a certain place, for instance in an area of more detail. I'll click the blue arrow again to restore the clip. When I'm done with the clipping, I can go back to the clipping panel and select Remove Clipping. Another aspect of the image that we can control is making adjustments to the brightness, contrast, and fade of the image. Under the Adjust panel, I can drag the brightness and the contrast, and also the fade. Fade is one of the most common commands that is used, because sometimes images are just too intense, and they obscure the geometry. You can see that when I adjust the fade, the geometry itself becomes more prominent. Often, bringing the contrast up a bit helps retain detail in a faded image. 